Welcome to the last episode, the last analysis of mathematics, how it applies to real world scenarios. I'm going to try to keep this shorter. I'm not going to go into all the math. I think we covered that. But let's just, because it's the last episode, let's go over a couple of things from the past. Here we got... Well, first, let's go over a little bit of vocabulary. We will discuss, if I remember, negligible, what it means. <clears throat> For example, here's a car. You got the sale price of a car. You got taxes in California. And then we talk about is 1%. Significant. Let's talk about significance. Population of the United States, uh, last time I looked, was this number. So what's one per, or I'm sorry, population over here is that number. U.S. population. All right. And now, what's 1%? Is 1% significant? Well, here's 1% of the population, 3,300,000 or so. So what's 0.1%? Well, let's take, clip off another 10th degree precision, 0.01%, 0.001%. I think it's more like 0.001% of the people that actually control everything. That's just my... I think it's more like this number, the people that are in control. It's a very small fraction, maybe even less people. I mean the people at the very top. 3,000 people. I don't know how many countries there are in this world. But you only need a few people at the, at the top, don't you? Hello. How are you? Welcome to the last episode. You don't want truth. Truth is hard. <laughs> you want easy street. Yes, you do. Your compliance is my will. Capitulation. It's easy. You just want to be left alone, right? Go along and get along. Put on a mask. It's the signal to me that you agree with me. And soon you will get a secret dose, a serum. I've had bottled up for a long time, but the time is now. Ready? Roll up your sleeve and take my injection. It's what I want, but you want it too, right? Of course you do. You don't want to die, do you? <laughs> and talking about significance, 26 cents. What is, what can you buy for a quarter? Not much nowadays. Well, not so long ago, you could buy a gallon of milk, a can of beans. And later we're going to get into lines. These are some laws about lines. You can look it up yourself. It's very easy. Everyone knows how to gaggle. Right? That's the way. Pure gratification. Uncensored, of course. <clears throat> the laws of parallel lines. 
parallel lines, angles, obtuse and acute angles. If two lines are parallel, their interior angles are the same because it's like the same line. Interior angles are the same. These two angles are the same, and these two angles are the same. So if you have parallel lines, it's going to be the same too. We talk about lines here. You got two lines that are parallel and a line intersecting. Two lines that are parallel and a line that's intersecting. That line. That means these two angles are the same. Let's go to comparing graphics, what we did in the first episode. So we have, we were originally talking about, and the only reason I did the first episode was because that eight inches per mile squared was really bugging me. I was like, where in the heck did that come from? So that's why, that's the only reason I brought it up is because it literally came out of nowhere, didn't it? Eight inches per mile square. Uh, it's, it's the reason. It's the easy measurement. We already discussed what that measurement is. Don't use it. It doesn't matter. It's not even something we're concerned with. But here was that analysis. The further away you go, and these are the miles. Eight miles, 120 miles, 200 miles. 500 miles around here, 500 mile mark, the further away from the zero, the more the calculations diverge, moving away, diverging, straying away from the true measurement, the true measurement being this gray line, which is using just pure trigonometry, trigonom uh, trigonometric functions, and values, the Pythagorean theorem, which I discussed in the first episode, which I believe gave rise to eight inches per mile square. And we discussed that ad nauseum, didn't we? And there's the original graphic there. Divergence, the one in the middle approaches the circumference and it was right on. Then later we discussed the Sajita. I might have um, suggested the law of cosines at one time. How to derive that formula, my derivation using pure speculation and, and uh, not only trigonometry but uh, geometry. The Cartesian plane, what it looks like, you got an X axis and a Y axis. And we use unit circle. And we talk about that. And you can gaggle any of these topics and you can find plenty of stuff. Some scratch work I did to get to this point. And finally, lines. We talked about that. Compare. Sajita, Cartesian, Scratch, finding the tangent. And here we go, the basic understanding. So we are talking about the final concept, the conclusion, the, the most important thing that we need to know. And before I get onto that, let's talk about field of view. What can you see when you're this guy standing at the top of the earth? Because remember, no matter where you are, you're at the top. If you're here, you're at the top. If you're here, you're at the top. If you're over here, you're at the top. So everyone is at the top. If you're here looking at the top and you're looking at some guy over here, he's also at the top. So we only use this Cartesian plane with the X and Y axis with an origin to perform calculations. It's not what is actually what you can see or cannot see. These are just... This is a representation, how to get a calculation. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Not everyone has the math skills. And if you do have the math skills, you don't even need to watch this, right? Well, let's just talk about it. So 
field of view. If this guy's, if this is the person's head, he can see. He's not looking this way. His eyeballs can go this way. His eyeballs can go this way, and he can move his neck around too. So if his field of view is absolutely 180 degrees. He can see everything up here. He can see everything down here, right? That's the field of view we're talking about. This whole field of view. When you look out into the out into the ocean, let's say, you're not restrained to looking just straight. You can look down. You can look up. So if there's something sticking out over here, uh, you can tilt your head a little bit and you can see the top of it. There it is. Or if something's way down here, you can tilt your head a little bit and you can look down. So we're going to talk about the tangent line. <clears throat> That's the tangent line. Now what's in the way? We also talk about this, right? If you were to traverse going over this hump to there, there would be some tangent line, some lump of dirt in your way to see what's on the other side, to see what's actually down here. This is what you can't see. So this tangent line is touching, touching one single dot of the Earth when traversing the Earth from A to B going there. That's the sagitta in the middle. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's this tangent line. The sagitta just means the midpoint, the height in the middle from A to B. This tangent line is also known as the horizon. What is the horizon? It's the apparent line that separates Earth from the sky, the line that divides all viewing directions based on whether it intersects the Earth's surface or not. The true horizon is actually a theoretical line which can only be observed when it lies on the sea surface. At many locations, this line is obscured by land, trees, buildings, mountains, etc. And the resulting intersection of earth and sky is called the visible horizon. So if you have a mountain here, uh, your horizon would be a little bit higher. That would be an artificial horizon. So looking out onto the ocean, the true horizon surrounds the observer and is typically assumed to be a circle drawn on the surface of a perfectly spherical model of the earth. Its center is below the observer and below the sea level. So here's the observer's eyeballs, the horizon, and it's below sea level because your feet are at sea level, your eyeballs are above sea level, and the horizon is below sea level because here we are. It goes down and over because you are you have a height greater than zero. That's all that means. This is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo down here. We know what a horizon is. We know what an artificial horizon is. Looking over the ocean, of course, there's going to be something that you can't see on this model. Okay. Enough said. These are the videos one and two that I did of this series, and here we are at the final stage. Like I said, I'm trying to keep the math at a minimum and just talk about more of understanding. So here we go. We got the tangent line, the horizon, if you would, going this way, right? A is always the observer, okay? B is always what's being observed. A, the observer. B, the object or the person being observed from A to B. And we always traverse over the surface. And the real distance 
is always the secret line or the chord, okay? So now, going back to the Tanya line, this red line here, when we say tangent, remember from talking about circles? Tangent means is defined as being perpendicular. That being said, we can draw a diagram of a perfect triangle. But here is the tangent secant formula over here. Here's how to describe the segments. A segment is PS, that is a segment. A segment is PQ, and a segment is also PR. PR includes PQ and QR. And I've also defined the segments as a T for tangent, and A for the height of A, and B, this chord through the circle. And I represent that here. And using cross multiplication, this is how you find the length of the tangent. The length of this. That is the horizon. Now, when I first explored this, I went explicitly from this diagram and these set of rules from the tangent secant formula. Later, I realized if we draw the diagram, here is the horizon. This is the height. The horizon meaning the eyeballs are looking down as far as you can see before the the swell of the ocean or a bump of dirt gets in your way, and that's as far high you can see going up away from Earth. There's going to be some line. This line. If it would continue, the tangent is there, and there would be some invisible portion down here, some hidden portion, right? We talked about that many times. So using the rule that the tangent line here, we're going to be interested in this line this Greek alphabet here called the alpha. And I have here, uh, where is it? Greek, there we go. Here's the Greek alphabet, if you want to screenshot that. We're going to talk about alpha, that's A, beta is B, we got theta here, and these are just letters, right? So, here we go. This angle alpha, tangent line. If you realize that this is a tangent line, then you realize that you can make a perfect triangle right there with a 90 degrees. And I always double check and triple check my math to make sure the numbers come out right. So firstly, when I... Uh, went on to this, I said, okay, this is tangent line, and using the law of, of cosines, I found the length of that tangent line. <clears throat> Here, and that's the tangent line, this T, this, this uh, segment, okay, which turns out to be this formula. And if you evaluate that and you can solve for t, t is this. So the length of t, this, is this. And then I plug in the numbers. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So tangent theta, this angle, opposite over adjacent. This is radius, and this is the length uh, t, opposite over adjacent. 
And then if you back substitute what this is, T is this number. And here's T. Here's alpha. This is the angle alpha. From the height of object A, looking across the Earth, the tangent line, this way. The maximum visibility, the absolute min um, maximum, I guess, could be the maximum, but I guess it's also, it's actually the minimum. The, the minimum line, the horizon, the horizon. And <clears throat> I proved it through the law of cosines. Here's the law of cosines over here. And here we go, the law of cosines. So you have the angle using angle alpha here and here. So I proved it twice, and then I realized, well, if this is a perfect right triangle, I don't even need that because the alpha, with regards to sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side, which is this side. It's going to be the radius plus the height of object A, or the person, the observer. So sine alpha is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite is R. R, hypotenuse, H plus R. So there we go. Alpha is arc sine R over the sum of R plus H. And there we go. There it is. Moving along. Now that we have alpha, alpha, now we can do some things here. How do we find what we can see and cannot see? That's why we're here, right? What is f of x? That's a line. Here's the form. y equals, or f of x equals, some slope times some value of x plus an intercept. Slope, intercept, form. The intercept, we're going to call... Everything here, everything the green line, this line here, that fucking center on it, <clears throat> pardon me, the green line is going to be object B, what we're observing. A is always the height of object A over here, according to this diagram. So the green line, we're calling it intercept sub B. That's going to be here. What is an intercept? An inter a y-intercept is where it is. The line, the line, let's get this, the line from the origin to the observer. We're going to draw an imaginary line that goes on forever. From the origin, where the observer, the observed is. A line. <clears throat> okay, another imaginary line is the horizon. It goes this way. The horizon goes this way. So those lines, imaginary lines, are going to intersect. And those are the lines that we're interested in. And you're going to see why. So A is some height, B is some height. The inner, how do we find an intersection? We need the intercepts and we need the slopes. Okay? So the X intercept. There we go. We're going to find the intercept X right there. And that's going to be where the tangent line intersects the observed line. And that's going to be the maximum, the point of visibility where hidden versus visible meets. So this horizon, you cannot see below the horizon because this lump of dirt or this swell of water is 
obscuring your view. So the horizon sweeps across and goes through the observed, which is the height of um, this object B over here, <clears throat> and it intersects somewhere there. And that's how we're going to find the intersection. So you can pause it, look at all of this stuff here. We have the change of Y, the change of X. Sub T means tangent, sub B means B, the observed. Sub A is the observer, sub B is the observed. Sub T is always regarding the tangent. We got a tangent point here, which lies on the surface. So we have a tangent point sub X and a tangent point sub Y because it goes some X, some Y. Some X, some Y, and that's the point. <clears throat> and it just so happens if you use geometry, and you can equate these angles, 90 degrees is pi over 2. We're talking about radians. We're always talking about radians. This is just an arbitrary alpha. And this is alpha here, this angle that correlates to this tangent. Those angles happen to be exactly the same. I draw this diagram down here. This is how we find the intercept of x here. Using these rules, here's the slopes. Here's how you find the slopes. And we equate the function of a, the function of tangent, equated to the function of the observed b. We create those lines. using these steps here, these rules, and we just multiply it out algebraically. Here's the intercept. Here we go. I break it down. Here it is when you plug it in. If you let L equal R plus H, I just did a little shorthand here. <clears throat> L times cosine alpha is the sum of R plus H sub A times cosine, cosine alpha. So the intersection is here. Some x intercept and some y intercept. Here's some y. Here's uh, um, the intersection of y. Because we have we need an x and a y. So the point of the intersection is going to be somewhere around here. And how do we find that? It's the function of the function of the tangent line. So g of f of t, which is the line tangent, going this way. We're going to call it f of t. f of b goes this way. A function of the b line. We break it down here, and there it is. Nice and neat. Also, the slope of m, uh, the slope, which is m sub t, the slope of the tangent line is this. And this is how I rigorously prove that here. Here's the diagram over here. Create a right triangle on top. Here's angle alpha. The slope that we're interested in, though, is not alpha. Alpha is reg regarding this triangle. What we want is here's A. He's looking straight across. He can look down to the horizon, right? Looking straight across, looking down to the horizon, we can create a triangle here. So the actual the angle is, I believe if I can if I remember correctly, it's called the complement of angle alpha to the 90 degrees is going to be pi over 2 minus alpha. And to go the proper direction, and look at this diagram here. We're in quadrants one, two, three, and four. So to go down, we need to subtract 90 degrees. Alpha minus pi over two, which is 90 degrees. I prove it again here and here. Okay, I hope we're following along. 
here are the angles. Alpha, the angle alpha, and the angle alpha minus pi over 2, which is just making sure that it's going in the right direction, the negative, not going this way and not this way, positive. This is positive, and this is negative. All right? I hope that's clear now. To find out what you can and cannot see, we are looking at the tangent line, and we're looking at the B line. And there's going to be some intersection. Here are the formula. This is what you need to calculate this diagram. You got that artificial tangent line going through the air. This is the height of A. Here's that angle of the observer looking down onto B, right? Because according to this model, we're looking down. <clears throat> but if we're both on top, you know, we're both looking up, aren't we? Because you have to look up and over the dirt, and he has to look up and over the dirt. So you're both looking up. But just to make math simple, A looking onto B is looking down. Here is that 8 inches per mile square here. We never even need it because it doesn't describe anything. You can find, uh, for a quick and dirty, something very close a mile or two, look at the Sajita. That gives you something quick and dirty. The distance squared over 6 will give you this, the sagita in feet. Can you see over the lump of dirt? Anyway, moving along. Here's alpha. This is something that you're going to need, alpha. You're also going to need to know the delta. That is the angle from A to B. From A to B is the inside angle here, theta distance over radius. Beta is going to be this complementary angle. I sure hope I remember that correctly. I believe it's the complement. Two angles that add up to be 90 or pi over 2. I believe that's the complement. If I remember that incorrectly, just drop a comment. Um, beta, when I talk about beta, is going to be this complementary angle. 2 theta. How do we find that? 90 degrees minus theta. 90 degrees in radians is pi over 2 minus theta. It's going to give us beta. That's going to come into play. So let's talk about the points. We got some point of here, the observed in the air. That's his head or his eyeballs or the peak of a mountain, the top of a building. We got the base, and I call that the surface of point B. The base, or the surface. Surface, touching the ground, and the air, touching the sky. Same thing with H. But because we're standing up, we're always going to look at the longest line, which is R plus your height. Whether you're on a mountain, a bridge, or just a person standing in the water, whatever. The radius plus your height, or the height. And same thing with B. The radius plus the height of B. Here's the length of T. Really don't, really, really don't need it. Here is the slope of T. Remember, T is this tangent line, this red tangent line, the horizon, okay? Here are some points. <clears throat> Here is the formula for calculating visibility. Using the distance formula, 
you can gaggle that all day long. The distance formula is the square root of the change in y, or y sub 2 minus y sub 1, plus square. Oh, I forgot the squared here. The difference of x is squared. Let me just change that really quick for my notes so I don't... Mm-hmm. All right, there we go. Fixed. <clears throat> okay, I made a little correction. So here is the formula for visible right there. All right. Here is the function of t, the, the x-intercept form of the tangent line. Here is the x-intercept form for the B line, the line of B, the observed line. And if you go back and look at the notes, here is the slope times some x value plus the, y, the uh, intercept of the observer, the radius plus the height of the observer. And the intercept of the B line is zero. And the slope of the B line is tangent beta, right? Because you have beta, which is some angle. You have beta, which is the complement. And to find the height of beta, you got the radius, which is the hypotenuse. So you got r sine beta over r cosine beta, which is tan beta. And that's how we got the slope. There it is again. All right. <clears throat> there are going to be only three inputs. The distance traversing the circle. And we're not getting into those word games, right? Sphere, circle, okay? We're drawing a picture looking at a, a sphere from a distance, and we're talking about a circle, we're talking about mathematics. We can ignore the depth and just concentrate on what is important here, and that's the x and y axis. We got the height of the observed and the height of the observer. The only constant that we're using is the circumference of the Earth. 24,881. Divide that by our 2 pi. Circumference equals diameter times pi. Or circumference equals 2 times r, which is the diameter, times pi. Right? And that's how we get the r. So the constant I evaluate is 20, 24881 divided by 2 pi, and that's where I get r. It's 39.59 point something, okay, or 39.60. <clears throat> okay, the, there are some logical points. Now, when we look at how to find what's visible, that's tricky. It took me a little while to figure it out. But here we go. Let's look at it now. So, walk 1,710 miles. And I have here, this is 400 miles of height. Now I changed the thickness of these red lines. Observer A here and observer B here. These, this is 400 miles. Let's see, 211, 2000, 211, 2000, divided by 5280 feet. That's 400 miles. So these lines are 400 miles tall. And there's a reason why I chose 400. It's because I, when I put in these grid lines, I had to add this extra grid line so we can see. What we're looking at, these are 100 mile grids, 100 by 100 squares. 
so we can view what's going on. So if we look at uh, 1,000 miles, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 squares, right? And a little smidge over here because of this curve. And this is the starting at the origin zero going up. It's 40 squares. So the 40th square is right here. And if we take a zero, instead of 400, take a zero off, that's going to be 40. And that's the only reason why I'm using that 211, 200, is to fill in that gap right there for 40 miles. 3960 plus 40 is 4,000. So that's why we have 40, 40 squares. 40 squares up and 40 squares across. A 40 by 40 square of 100 miles. Make sense? So that's just a magic number. But just so we can see it easily, 400 miles. And we're looking at stuff like that. That's a graph that you can talk about, a diagram that you can draw pictures on. Because you can see it. If you look at the scale, these lines are like 10 miles thick, right? That's not realistic, but I just wanted, but if you zoom in, I programmed it to get, you know, to, uh, so that way when it's far away, you can see the line. And when you zoom in, you can still see the line. It's programmed in there. It's like, I don't know, you could probably fit a couple hundred lines. So it doesn't look as thick when you zoom out. You know, that's a 10 mile, 10 miles thick, 400 miles high. Because this, this graphic here is to scale. Everything is drawn to scale except for the thickness of the lines. Lines, remember, a line has no thickness, zero thickness. Definition of a line. There's no weight. There's no thickness. It's a mathematical tool. Here we go. Now, you are an observer, 40 miles high, and the observed is 40 miles tall. We're at 100 miles distance. You know, if we put one mile, that's what we're looking at. 10 miles, that's what we're looking at. So just so we can look at the graph. 1,000 miles, what was it? no, 100 miles, we can look at it, and we're both 400 miles tall, and see the intersection here? The intersection, well, remember we were talking about the intersection, what's above the intersection is what we can see, and what's below the intersection is invisible, so there's a problem with that, isn't there? We can't just use the distance formula because that looks like this is visible and this is hidden. But obviously, look, the tangent is here. There's the tangent line. Tangent line. But there's the intersection where the red dot is. That's the intersection. And that's the tangent dot of intersection. So that's not painting a, a realistic um, definition of what is visible and invisible. So we have to set two limits. And let's talk about those limits. One limit is, this is the lower, uh, the lower limit. And the lower limit I said like this. Let's look at, and we talk about limits. <clears throat> Here is the lower limit, and I described the lower limit as this is, looking at here, the line tangent sub x, the x coordinate, is it greater than the b line on the surface, 
the x coordinate. So the tangent of x, is it greater than, x means left to right, horizontal. So is x to the right of b of x. So that's the lower limit. Is the tangent line to the right of the intersection? No. Is the b line to the right of the intersection? That is the lower limit. It is not. Let's look at the upper limit. What is the upper limit? The upper limit is, is described when we're looking at the line B. This is the line B where the observed is line B. Is line B the Y coordinate? of line B higher or lower than the tangent line of the y coordinate and because this is a tangent line it goes on forever and the B line goes on forever this is the upper limit when the tangent line is higher than the observed that means nothing is visible at all. Here's the lump of dirt or the swell of the ocean that's in the way. And we're looking at the upper limit. We're looking at, we're testing the limit. And the intersection Y coordinate is higher than the intersection of the B sub Y coordinate. So that means nothing is visible at all. Everything is visible here because the tangent is to the right of the base of the B. Here's the tangent coordinate here. The tangent reaches here, the intersection is here. It's to the right. So that means everything, because the lump of dirt is this way, is this clump right here, the, the height, the bump height. And let's fill that in. The bump height isn't sufficiently high enough to block what's visible. See that? The intersection is here. The tangent line cuts across right there. And it's not sufficiently high enough to block your view. Does that make sense? So you, we have to build in a logical question when we perform visibility. Is it all visible or nothing visible? Nothing visible here and everything visible here. See the tangent? Right there. That's the tangent dot. The tangent is to the right of the intersection. So therefore everything is visible. Everything is visible. 100 miles, 400 miles, visible, because this is 400 miles tall. I don't know what that number is. 2,112,000 feet tall. 400 miles, the whole thing is visible. Now, I did build in a couple things here. I did program these into my calculator. And I have that here. This is um, the script for the TI, Texas Instr Instruments Calculators. So I plug that in there. Let's get rid of this screen. And I can do a video on how to program a calculator if you like, because most people have probably done that in college. <clears throat> so let's look. 1710 miles. 1,710 miles, 211, 2,000, 211, 2,000, divided by 5280, 400 miles tall, 
or two, two, two million one hundred and twelve thousand miles feet tall well that's visible so if you just use what's visible here's the visibility 400 feet 3.999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
the graph here, the limit. Here, let's look at the, um, nope. There is the drop right there. This is the drop, which is 200 miles. The Sagita for close intervals is a good thing to remember. 53 miles, so is 200 miles behind the curve have anything to do with Sajita 53 miles? No. Not when we're looking at when you plug in a number with regarding how tall you are. Are you on a bridge or are you on a mountain? And how tall is the object that you're looking at? Well, in this case, everything is visible. So, even talking about the Sajita, well, if you're 400 miles tall, And the Sajita is <clears throat> 53 miles tall. Well, you're 400 looking over, you're four, eight times taller than the clump of dirt or the clump of the swell of the ocean. You're eight times taller, so pretty much you can probably see everything, right? Moving along. Let's get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. We don't need to look at that anymore. And let's just here we go. Let's start fresh. Ten miles away. Tall. You're looking at a building that's a hundred feet tall. Can you see it? Go ahead. Eight inches per mile square. Can you see it? That's the graph. Gonna have to rely on the map. So, let's do the math. Eight inches per mile square. I'm sure you already know the 10 miles on that one. 66.7 feet. Well, if you use that formula I gave you, distance square over six gives you feet. Well, 16. The bump is 16 feet, but you're only six feet tall. Oh, what can you see? Well, turns out, using the logic and the intersection formula, you can see 67 feet <clears throat> of 100 feet. Remember when we were talking about... We were talking about neg negligible. What is negligible? I'll do a gaggle. Let's find out what negligible means. So I wanted to bring it up just for a quick second. Negligible. Now, at 10 miles away, you might be asking yourself, if you're mathematically inclined, well, is the guy that's 10 miles away, the building 100 feet tall when you look at it on a curve? Well, it turns out, when you look at a building, if this is 100 feet, if you, this is six feet tall, make sure this is turned on. If this is six feet tall, you're looking at something 100 feet tall, but you're looking at it tilted away from you. Are you really looking at 100 feet still? How tall is he? Well, it turns out, remember these lines? Pause it if you need to. That means 
parallel lines. This line and this line means that this line parallel to this line, this angle is the same as this angle. Law of parallel lines. So to find the height of B at that distance, you use the same angle. which is the complement of theta, which is angle B, remember? Pi over two minus theta. That's how to calculate the apparent height. So what is the apparent height of a 100 foot building 10 miles away? 99.99968 feet. That is negligible data. So when you're looking at something 10 miles away and it's 100 feet tall, it's going to be a discrepancy of whatever that number is. Uh, 100 minus 99. 999681. Now when it's to the 4, negative 4, that means you move it over 4 places. So 0 0.123 and then 419. That many feet discrepancy. 1, 3, 1 ten thousandth of a foot? You can't even measure that. So that's what we call being negligible data close distances, 10 miles, 100 feet. Well, what if it's um, 20 miles? That's got to make a big difference. Still, 20 miles away, 100 feet minus apparent height, because it's tilting away from you, which is 99.998725. Whoops. 99.998725. One one thousandth of a foot, still negligible data. 20 miles away, apparent height, the tilt. Because look, that is the graph. It is, for all intents and purposes, Pretty darn flat. You can you have to use your math to figure out. So even these two lines look parallel. They are not parallel, but they look parallel, don't they? Twenty miles. The grand scheme of things. Negligible data. I just wanted to cover that because that's important. It could come up in a conversation now. But that's just hundred feet. It's gonna tilt more of these. A thousand feet, like a skyscraper. I don't know what skyscrapers are. I don't know how many feet they are. Let's just say a two thousand foot sky uh, skyscraper, twenty miles away. Oh, you can see the line. Let's see what that is. Two thousand feet. Two thousand feet minus the apparent height. Let's get that whole number. Copy. <coughs> uh, I thought there was a... There we go. Oh, this should be... Um, 2,000. So 2,000 actual feet minus the apparent height. It's a discrepancy of 0.25 one hundredths of a foot. 25 one hundredths of a foot. So, 20 miles away, a 2,000 foot skyscraper, the height difference, the apparent height is negligible. Means really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Now, I hope that's satisfactory. Okay, I'll just leave it there. Uh, no more discussion of negligible data. I hope that
brings it to a rest. That's the only reason why I came up with this apparent height and the actual height. And see, so look, visible height, 1807 feet, and the visible height, 1807 feet. Apparent visible, 1807. Uh, visible, just using direct math, um, 1807. So it's the same. Because if you're going to say that this building is at 20, at 20 miles away, the building is not, in fact, 2,000 feet tall. It is exactly 1,999.974492 feet tall. That's negligible. And I built in those calculations. Do the math. Do the math. I showed you all the formula. You should be able to do the math now. Here are the constants. 24881 miles circumference with a derived radius. And most of these numbers here are rounded to six places, if not two places, for uh, said feet, maybe. Maybe in my calculator I did that. And so the calculator I programmed, Earth. 20 miles. Six feet high, looking at a 2,000-foot skyscraper. I uh, guess that's a... I don't know, is that a skyscraper? I don't know. There is the radius, 39599.934139. There we got here, yep. Here is the bulge, right? 66 points. I did round it two here. And because why do you need six places to measure feet? And same thing with inches, right? So 66.67 feet is the bulge, or 800.01 inches. Here is the angle alpha, 1.57 radians. I know I got it in here somewhere. Did I put it in this? Da, da, da. I don't think I even put it in this. Um, it's not important. You really don't need to know it. Um, it's in the calculations, but we don't need to see it here. I didn't put it in, but I did put it in the calculator. Uh, I don't think I put it in Apex. No, I didn't put it in this. I did it one time. Uh, something happened. Something crashed, and I lost some things that I was looking at. I think it was in here somewhere. There was a crash, and I was like, ah, I don't even need to talk about it. And then I just put it on the shelf, you know, a long time ago. Anyway, let's move along. Um, the intercept of A, 20 miles. The intercept of Y, 3959. When we're looking at the Cartesian plane, that means some 20 miles over. And some third from the origin, right? Some 20 miles over, and some 3959.9 miles up. Lower limits are both false, which means, remember, we were looking at this. If they are both false, false and false, false and false means use the visible formula, which is the distance formula, which is this right here. Visible, the height of B minus the distance formula, right there. And same thing for hidden, the height of B minus the distance formula, the only distance. Looking at beta, which is this angle here. You got the height, which is the hypotenuse is here, which is the radius. We're, we're looking at this diagram. Sine beta, which is the complementary angle here. And when you want the both, 
You want the whole line from not just the origin to the surface, but the origin to the surface plus the height of B. So when you got hidden radius plus B. And you subtract. Those are the formula, the formulae, the formulas for the visibility. And see let me change this to what was it? Twenty six to twenty six and two thousand. Twenty six and two thousand feet. The visibility formula works. These are the logical visibilities, and this is only the visibility. Only the visibility in the hidden formula, and this is using logic. The logical upper and lower limits. So if we drop down to 10 miles, see there's a discrepancy. Oh, not 10 miles, not even two miles. So six foot tall, looking at a skyscraper two miles away. Here's the distance formula, visible and hidden. It looks like some portion is Invisible, less than a foot, but still. In all actuality, looking at lower and upper limits, in all actuality, 100% is visible. So if you're, let's say you're on your knees in some water and you're like, okay, I'm going to put the camera at one foot tall. Well, it looks like they're the same false and false using the visible formula still, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I think I've covered everything. Oh, and this is the calculator that I own. When I'm doing math and scratch paper, um, I bought this in college a few years back, quite a few years back. Uh, I own several. Uh, Texas Instruments calculators. This was the best calculator I ever bought. I bought the TI-83. That's the one that's most widely used in college because uh, it doesn't do what the TI-89 does, and the TI-84 doesn't do what the TI-89 does either, but the TI-84 I think is the best calculator, calculator I've ever owned. It's worth the investment especially if you're a college student, get this one, TI-84 plus CE. Most um, professors don't allow you to use the TI-89. And if you're a college student, you know why. It uh, has many, many capabilities, it does derivatives, and it shows you um, uh, the variable, uh, it gives you the formula, which is what Usually what you need to show is the formula after you do a calculation and not a number. Whereas a TI-83 and a TI-84 will give you a number if you perform a derivative or some calculus function will give you the formula. And that's what you're supposed to demonstrate in college that you actually know what you're doing and you have to show all your steps. And TI-89, does those steps for you and shows you what the uh, results are instead of just giving you a number. Anyway, enough talk about that. I hope that was satisfactory and that's basically what we need. Three inputs, distance, height of the observer, height of the object being observed. observed. We have one, two, and we have alpha here three times because I proved it three times how to get the angle but using T which is that secant tangent uh, formula but if you draw an actual diagram correctly you'll see that you don't even need the length of T so this is actually 
optional. You really don't need the length of T. You can find the angle out by drawing a diagram. And of course, drawing a good diagram and making the correct assumptions. That comes with uh, practice, of course. Um, so we got the angles, alpha or theta, which is the angle traversing the surface. That's the inside angle here. Finding the complementary angle is alpha. Uh, angle beta, pi over two minus theta, see? We got the angle alpha, which is this angle when you find that tangent line, because the horizon is tangent to the Earth, tangent. And we got points of intersection here, which are these formula we went over. Uh, we do need the slopes, so I included that here. These are all 15, 16, 17 formula that you need to be familiar with. 17. And I went over all of them, how to get them. And finally, those 17 formula, formulae, formulas, also accompanied with two logical steps with the upper limits and the lower limits to make sure that you're evaluating what's visible and what's invisible, what's hidden. And that's it, folks. Eight inches per mile square. Doesn't matter, man. Don't ever say it. Uh, the only reason why I went into that a long time ago was because when I first heard eight inches per mile square, I was like, well, where did it come from? What does it do? And I showed where it comes from, and I show, I showed what it does. And then I came back, I'm like, well, that really doesn't really matter. It's the bulge. And still I stand by that. It's the bulge. It's the sagita that gives you a quick and dirty um, guesstimate. But if you really want to know, hey, plug these formula into your calculator. And you can carry your TI calculator anywhere you go. So you go over to a lake and you're gauging something that's far away. Someone on the other side of the lake, whip out your TI calculator, and there you go. You can punch in the numbers. And that's how we're going to do it. Looking at someone 20 miles away across the big lake. Uh, I'm going to put my camera at four foot, foot tall and the person over there waving their flashlight at me. They're going to be at, you know, five feet tall. Can you see him? Visible zero, hidden five. Visible zero, hidden five. Across a 20, 20 foot lake. So according to the model, if someone's 20 miles away with these specifications, you cannot see them. Let's see if they're the observer six feet tall. Can you see him? No. Ah, one more thing. S max. I calculated this. And this is S max for A. Oh, here we go. S max. S max visibility for given distance. 2.999997 miles. The minimum height to see all of A, minimum visibility, 266.67 feet. That means at this 20 miles, in order to see 
that person on the other side, you have to be 260 feet, 266 feet high. So let's try it. It says here is zero feet, zero visibility at 620. Let's do, let's do 10 miles. It's hard to find a 20 mile lake, isn't it? Let's do 10 miles. Okay. You have to be 66.7 feet tall to see 10 miles across the lake. If this person is five foot tall, shining a light back at you. So if you, let's say you're on a ladder and you're 20 feet up, can you see him? According to this model, no. According to this model, you have to be six, 67 foot. So let's put 66 feet tall. Still some portion hidden. One one thousandth of a foot. So 66 feet tall. What if I'm 65? Or is it in 60 feet tall? Uh, just a few inches short. So I'm 50 feet tall. Okay, one foot should be missing. See if I'm 40 foot tall. Ah, okay. 45 feet tall? Okay, so if you're 45 feet tall and they're 10 miles away, you can, oh, this is interesting. 10 miles away, if you're 40 foot, 45 foot tall, you can still see the light flashing. Because if he's holding it five foot up, He's holding it at chest level. You can still see that light flashing or the laser flashing. That's if you're on a 45-foot ladder. But if you're only on a 10-foot ladder, no, you can't see anything. Won't be able to see it if you're flashing a light to a guy that's standing at the edge of the water, even if you're on a 15-foot ladder. Nope. Cannot see it according to the model. And the S max means, let's put them both at five feet tall, looking at a five, five foot tall, looking at a five foot tall. The S max here means, in order to see it 100%, you have to be at least 2.73859 miles away in order to see it. So this is 10 miles. Let's go five miles. Only portions visible. Only a portion is visible. Four miles. This means to, to see it 100% copy. Five foot visible. Five foot visibility when you're 2.73859. So if I change that to 738, 73 or 2.7. Two point six. Oh, you're closer. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Two point eight. Two point eight. Some microscopic foot is going to be hidden. Two point seven. That's how these numbers work. Minimum height to see everything, and the minimum. I put max. Max visibility for the distance S. So to see 100%, even the microscopic foot, this is the magic number for these heights. Okay, um, I think I showed, or I did derive, did I put it on here for maximum? Oh, here we go. If you want to know, this is S max for given height. That's the formula. And if you want to know the minimum height for the given distance, that's this formula. Okay? That's the minimum height 
for the given distance. All right, guys, I didn't want to make it too long, but this concludes all the math. Can I see it? Can I not see it? How much can I see? Plug it into your calculator. There's plenty of tutorials how to program a TI Instruments, Texas Instruments calculator. That's it, guys. That will conclude math from this guy. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.